Each of you know what it means to stare down danger and summon the strength in the moment of trial. We're grateful for all that you three have done, so many more. Of all the privileges of this office, none is greater than serving as the Commander-in-Chief of the finest military that the world has ever known. And of all the military decorations that our nation can bestow, we have none higher than the Medal of Honor. When you meet a veteran who wears that medal, remember the moment. Because you are looking at one of the bravest ever to wear our country's uniform. Today we recognize seven men as being among the bravest of the brave. Each of them distinguished himself with extraordinary valor. In the famous words, at the risk of his life, above and beyond the call of duty. Hi again, everyone. It's 5 o'clock in the East. The highest military honor one can receive is the Medal of Honor bestowed by the Commander-in-Chief to individuals who exhibit extraordinary bravery in combat, who in some cases make the ultimate sacrifice. This highest honor for valor has been awarded to just 3,519 recipients out of the more than 41 million individuals who have served our country. Among those re remarkable recipients are Desmond Doss, a World War II Army medic who put himself in danger to help wounded soldiers. He rescued 75 men trapped at the top of a cliff. Staff Sergeant Ronald J. Schur II. He saved several soldiers when they went under attack from machine gun and sniper fire in Afghanistan. No one died in the attack because of his valiant efforts. Milton L. Olive III was the first African-American soldier to receive this honor. At the age of 18, he sacrificed his life to save others by falling on a grenade. Mary Edwards Walker was an acting assistant surgeon during the Civil War and the only female recipient of the Medal of Honor. Commander Howard Gilmore was killed in action during World War II when his submarine was under attack. When he realized he could not get back into the vessel in time for it to escape, he yelled, take her down, and sacrificed himself. And there's a face familiar to all of you. Retired U.S. Army Colonel Jack Jacobs. During the Vietnam War, with impaired vision from injuries, he pulled 14 men to safety while he was under enemy fire. With all of that fresh in your mind, listen to what Donald Trump, the Republican nominee for president, said out loud with cameras rolling last night at a fundraiser at his golf club. He was speaking about awarding Miriam Adelson, she's the widow of GOP mega donor Sheldon Adelson, with the nation's highest civilian honor. I have to say, Miriam. Uh... I watched Sheldon sitting so proud in the White House when we gave Miriam the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That's the highest award you can get as a civilian. It's the equivalent of the Congressional Medal of Honor, but civilian version. It's actually much better because everyone gets the Congressional Medal of Honor. That's soldiers. They're either in very bad shape because they've been hit so many times by bullets or they're dead. She gets it, and she's a healthy, beautiful woman. So again, not a gotcha moment, nothing caught on secret, hidden camera. Public statements, a disgusting and shameful display from anyone, but especially someone who wants to be our country's commander in chief. It's a flagrant display of disrespect to the men and women who put their lives on the line and commit heroic acts on the battlefield to protect all of us and our way of life. Friend of this show and retired Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel Amy McGrath put it this way, quote, no, the Medal of Honor is not the equivalent of the medal Trump gave to Rush Limbaugh and Jim Jordan. No, they're not rated equal, not even close. Every single member of the military knows the significance of the Medal of Honor. Every single commander in chief in the history of America knows the significance of this medal, except Donald Trump. And as galling as his comments are, at this point, they're, they're not surprising, given the ex-president's long history of disparaging our veterans, publicly and privately. His chief of staff confirmed that he called those who fought for our country suckers and losers 
He questioned why someone would serve in the United States military. And he even criticized former Senator John McCain, a prisoner of war, for being captured. This is who Donald Trump really is. And this is where we start the hour with some of our favorite military experts in France. Medal of Honor recipient and retired Army Colonel Jack Jacobs is here with us, along with retired four-star general and MSNBC military analyst Barry McCaffrey, plus retired U.S. Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel and founder of Democratic Majority Action Pack, the aforementioned Amy McGrath, and the host of the Independent Americans podcast, founder and CEO of the Independent Veterans of America, and founder of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, Paul Rykoff is here. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for your service. I can't believe we have to have this conversation, Colonel Jack, but here we are. Um, I guess what I want to ask you is, do, do, the, do, do your peers, do the, do, the, do the men and women, do, the, do veterans, do the men and women of the military understand that Donald Trump not only doesn't respect them, but really does see them as suckers and losers. Well, many do, but, but, but many don't. Uh, despite the fact that Donald Trump is one of the most inept public speakers I've heard, and I'm, I'm an old person, so I've been around a great deal. I've heard a great number of public speakers. And you often don't know what it is he's saying, not convinced that he knows what it is he's saying, very digressive and so on, and drifted off into castigating people who have served and sacrificed and can't tell a difference uh, between, between the Medal of Freedom and the Medal of Honor. We have to remember that this is the man who, as you said, uh, denigrated people who served and sacrificed so that he could enjoy the freedom that he enjoys now. And if it weren't for these people, he wouldn't be in the position where he could enjoy, and all of us wouldn't be in the position where we could enjoy freedom. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that this is also the guy who uh, managed to avoid serving because of his really deleterious uh, heel spur on his foot. All that notwithstanding, uh, uh, the, the problem in this regard is that Donald Trump does not understand some of the things which in history have described how we get to a position where we can have freedom. That is through the service and sacrifice of others. I'm reminded of the observation of Hillel, that first century Hebrew scholar who, who, who wrote, if I am only for myself, what am I? Well, you, if you are only for yourself, you're probably Donald Trump. Or the observation, <laughs> almost as poignantly, of John Stuart Mill, who wrote about war. Trump ought to like him because he was something of an individualist and a libertarian, who wrote that a man for whom nothing is more important than his own safety is a miserable creature who is made free and kept free by better men than he. Nicole. I love that. Um, Colonel Jack, you might be mad at me for doing this, but I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show um, our viewers some of the video um, um, of when President Nixon awarded you this medal. And I'm going to share a little bit more of um, the history of your service. Um, your battalion came under intense heavy machine gun and mortar fire from a Viet Cong battalion. And as we said before, even though you were wounded by mortar fragments, you assumed command of the Allied company, ordered a withdrawal from the exposed position, established a defensive perimeter, and despite your own wounds, profuse bleeding from head wounds, which impaired your vision, with disregard for your own safety, you returned intense fire to evacuate a seriously wounded advisor to the safety of a wooded area where you administered life-saving first aid. You then return through heavy automatic weapons fire to evacuate the wounded company commander. You made repeated trips across the fire swept open rice paddies, evacuating wounded and their weapons. Your actions saved the lives of a U.S. advisor and 13 Allied soldiers. Um, we don't read all. Brian Williams probably did, and that's one of the many reasons we miss him. But we don't read all that every time we ask for your advice. Um, but some of what uh, I worry about many things when I worry about Donald Trump, but I worry about the erasure of um, selflessness. And I worry that what Donald Trump normalizes in his disgust of veterans and of those who lose their lives. I mean, one of the most harrowing things I think I read during his whole presidency 
was that he stood with General Kelly and didn't understand um, basically his, his pride in, in having a son who sacrificed, who, who lost his life serving the country. He sees people who put something other than themselves above self-interest as suckers and losers. That's his word. What do we do as a country with the fact that he's been elevated a third time, that an entire political party elevated somebody who sees service that way? Well, we all have to do a much better job of educating not only this generation, the people who are voting now, but future generations about the importance of democracy and how costly it is to get it and to keep it. Um, we have... Listen, you're looking at somebody who believes in universal service. I think anybody who's lucky enough to live in a free country owes it something in the form of service. And it's only until we have a system in which everybody has to make a contribution to freedom that we will value those things and therefore reject those who think that people who serve and sacrifice are losers. Those of us who've served in combat uh, General McCaffrey and, and everybody else uh, who's been in uniform, but particularly those who've served in combat, understand how important it is that we take care of each other. That's how we defeat the enemy and we come home and we preserve free freedom. Unless we can educate future generations about the importance of doing that, that that is the route to freedom, uh, we will always be at risk uh, in this situation, we'll be at risk. We will be at risk from demagogues who try to negate the efforts uh, of those who made this country great and who will keep it great. It's education is the only way that we can reach into the future, and we have to do a much better job of educating our future generations, Nicole.